Well, I'm Artifacts of Mars, and here is a Mad Science update for you today. This is not something that I can sit here and refute, by the way, but it should scare you. I don't know what we can do about it. Okay, they're talking about miniature nukes, and by mini nukes we mean tiny hydrogen bombs and mosquito-like robot weapons uh, for future warfare. Now, I didn't know about the uh, mini-nukes of this type. I didn't know about that uh, until I read this article. But the uh, mosquito-sized drones, yes, I did know about that. I've known about that for 10, 15 years at least. And if you know about it uh, for that long, it's, they already have it. They don't release stuff like this unless they have something more advanced. <coughs> Several countries are developing new nano weapons that could unleash attacks using mini nuclear bombs and insect like lethal robots. While it may be the stuff of science fiction today, uh, that is BS. The advancement of nanotechnology in the coming years will make it a bigger threat to humanity than conventional nuclear weapons, according to an expert. I agree with that uh, person, whoever it is. The U.S., Russia, and China are believed to be investing billions in nano weapons research. Nanobots are the real concern about wiping out humanity because they can be weapons of mass destruction says Louis D. Del Monte, Minnesota-based physicist and futurist. He is the author of a just-released book entitled Nanoweapons, a Growing Threat to Humanity. One unsettling prediction Del Monte made is that terrorists could get their hands on nanoweapons as early as the late 2020s through black market sources. It's not going to take him that long, Mr. Del Monte. According to Del Monte, nanoweapons are much smaller than a strand of human hair, and the insect-like nanobots could be programmed to perform various tasks, such as injecting toxins into people or contaminating the water supply of a major city. Another scenario he suggests that a nanodrone could do in the future is fly in a room and drop a poison onto something such as food to presumably target a particular individual. Federal government defines nanotechnology as a science, technology, and engineering of things so small they are measured on a nanoscale or about 1 to 100 nanometers. A single nanometer is about 10 times smaller than the width of a hum human's DNA molecule. So I guess the uh, mosquito sized things are obsolete now. Oh boy. For one, Defense DARPA has a program called the Fast Lightweight Autonomy Program for the purpose of, to allow autonomous drones to enter a building and avoid hitting walls or objects. DARPA announced a breakthrough last year after testing a hangar in Massachusetts. Frightening details about military nanotechnologies were outlined in the 2010 report from the Pentagon's Defense threat reduction agency, including how transgenic insects could be developed to produce and deliver protein-based biological warfare agents and be used offensively against targets in foreign country. In other words, they take uh, bugs like mosquitoes and give them a disease and attack people. Also forecast micro-explosives along with nanobots serving as bioweapons delivery systems or micro-weapons themselves and inhalable micro-particles cripple personnel. You scared yet? Last month's targeted assassination of King John Nam, the half-brother of North Korea's dictator, 
was a stark ruler that reminder that toxins are available from a variety of sources can be released in public locations. It's also been alleged by Russians propped a paper that nanoweapons were used by the U.S. against foreign leaders. As for the many dukes, most horrific, they were, represent most horrific near-term nanoweapons. Now, listen to this. Nanotechnology opens up the possibility to manufacture many new components so small they are difficult to screen and detect. Furthermore, a weapon capable of an explosion equivalent to about 100 tons of TNT could be compact enough to fit into a purse or pocket and weighs about 5 pounds and destroy large buildings or be combined to do greater damage to an area. When we were talking about making conventional nuclear weapons, they are difficult to make, he said. Making a mini-nuke would be difficult, but in some respects not as difficult as a full-blown nuclear weapon. Del Monte explained that the mini-nuke weapon is activated when that nanoscale laser trigger laser triggers a small thermonuclear fusion bomb. That's a hydrogen bomb using a tritium-deuterium fuel. Their size makes them difficult to detect, screen, and there's essentially no fallout associated with them. Still, while all the mini-nukes are powerful in and of themselves, he expects they are unlikely to wipe out humanity. He said a larger concern is the threat of nanoscale robots or nanobots because they are the technology equivalent of biological weapons. That pretty much breaks this down. Uh, imagine this scenario. A uh, plane flies in from China to New York and Chinese have a special compartment and they release 20 million insect-sized drones with one program in them. Kill. Are you getting a picture yet? And they fly down, they inject everybody in New York with some kind of poison or whatever. Or just, you know, genetically engineered bugs. Uh, this is getting out of hand. I've said this before. These things are getting out of hand, and if we don't get a rain on them and stop them, I mean, with uh, nuclear missiles and bombs, those are eventually going to, if we don't use them in combat, uh, those are going to become obsolete. Because what's the point of blowing up other persons, other countries' cities when you can just kill off the population and move in? You see what I mean? Conventional nuclear weapons are becoming obsolete. I thought that for a long time. Very gradually, they will become obsolete and they will be replaced by things, as this Mr. Del Monte says, could wipe us out. I'm Artifacts Mars. Sorry to be so grim, but somebody's got to talk about it. Uh, thanks for watching.